section 3.1 takes a look at something called linear approximation. Uh, the first thing that we'll just do is we'll kind of talk about what a linear approximation is. Um, linear approximation says something like this. Suppose we wanted to find the exact value of a function um, at a location that's difficult to calculate. For instance, let's say you wanted to calculate the square root of 4.1. Um, so square root of 4.1, your calculator would be able to handle that just fine. You should not have a calculator with you or a uh, difficult um, uh, point to work with in, in the type of calculator you're using doesn't have square roots maybe or something like that. So what you could do is you could notice that this is really close to the value, that is 4.1 is really close to the value 4. So we could actually say that the function value, that is the square root of 4.1, is about the same as the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. That's one way we can handle it, but we could actually do a little bit better than this. Um, in particular, the way that we can do better is we could use tangent lines. So what we could do is we could find a tangent line at x equals 4 and find a point on that tangent line when x equals to 4.1 and then find the value on the tangent line at 4.1 and it will be approximately equal to the value of the curve at 4.1. Let me draw you a picture of what this looks like. We'll, we'll put it on this next slide, but um, you can put it next to um, that definition sort of in your notes. Um, so let's say we had that square root graph. Now that graph looks approximately like this. And say we were interested in this at the point x equal to 4. And we'll say that's about right here. Well, 4.1 is very close to this. I'll mark it slightly um, to the right of it in green. So what we could actually do is we could actually use the point at x equal 4, like this is saying. We could draw a tangent line at this point, approximately like that. And then if you notice, if you looked at the point at 4.1 on the tangent line, it's about right there in that little spot of green, it's almost the same as the location where you're actually on the curve. So this would be a really good approximation, um, and it involves basic... Um, calculations that a fork function calculator can do, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and doesn't require the, the square root button, for example. So this definition that you see listed here is actually the definition now for linear approximation. So the linear approximation of a function f of x at x equals x0 is the function l of x equals f of x0. This in our equation we just did a minute ago was the number was the number square root of 4. So we, we can actually, a value we can actually find pretty easily, so it was 2. This is the slope of the tangent line, which we can get by doing the derivative. And this is the particular point that we're looking at. In our case, it was x minus 4, because we were looking at the point um, at, the, at the point 4 instead of the 4 point, 4 point 1. And then if we wanted to know what the value is at 4.1, we can substitute that in for x at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually find this for the function that we just defined above. So we have this function, square root of x. We have the x0 value, that is the value that we're able to find the square root at that's easy to calculate. And then we have the value we really care about is, which is 4.1 square root. So when we're taking a look at this, we have to calculate several things. If you notice in this description, we have to calculate f of the, the x0 value. So in our case here, this is f of 4, and we already said before that this is the number 2. We also have to know about the derivative, so the first part of doing that is actually finding the derivative. As we've worked with in class before, this derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, um, which also could be written as 1 over 2 square root x. And then what we want to know is we want to know what that, that uh, derivative value is at the value 4. So at the value 4, this would be 1 over 2 square root of 4, which is 2. So this ends up being 1 over 2 times 2, or 1 over 4. So our slope is, is 1 fourth. So this means that I could actually create this L of x function, actually let me put it down here, my L of x function in general is the function value 2 plus the slope 1 over 4 times x minus the x value, and our x value in this case was the number 4. So this is roughly the value, I and mean, we could simplify this and so forth, but what we're really interested in is we're really interested in approximating at this particular value, this value of x equal to 4.1. So we can find L of 4.1, this is 2 plus 1 fourth of 4.1 minus 4. Um, and so if we simplify this, we get 2 plus 1 fourth of 0.1, and this is actually equal to 2.025. So 2 2.025 is approximately f of 4.1.
And if you want to kind of look at how close your approximation is, you could actually use your more advanced calculators, the ones that most of you are using in class, and you could figure out what is the square root of 4.1's approximation according to your calculator, that is with more decimals and um, calculate it a little bit further out. And you actually find, um, and I'll put approximation because it's still going to be an approximation since this is not the actual square root, but it's 2.0248. We'll go with four, uh, six. So, I mean, as you can see, it, they're actually pretty close together. Um, the first place that they actually differ is when this goes four eight, and you'd have to round that up to a five, and we already have a five here. So they're they're fairly accurate. The first uh, two decimal places, the hundredths place, are identical, and then at the thousandths place, we actually differ by um, by a rounding error. All right, let's take a look at another one. We're going to do the same thing here, but as you notice, this is the sine uh, function, not our um, square root function. So, uh, in fact, it's important for us to sort of realize that, that the function here, because it's not defined in the same way the last one was, um, our function f of x is actually sine of x. Now, 1.0 is um, the x value that we want to find our function at. Um, and as you know, that's not a value in radians, it's sort of usable like a unit circle kind of value. But it's actually really close to the value that you would get if you were looking at the radian measure of pi over 3. So the x0 value being pi over 3 is approximately equal to the number 1. And it's not exact, right? But it's a really close value that you can use your unit circle knowledge to actually find a, a value at for the sine function. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to find f of pi thirds. So we're finding the sine of pi over 3. And the sine of pi over 3, as you know from your unit circle, is square root 3 over 2. All right, so that's, that's the first thing we do. The second thing is we find the derivative. So the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we evaluate this function value, this, front, this uh, derivative, at pi thirds. So the cosine of pi thirds, again, according to your unit circle knowledge, you realize that this should be the number 1 half. So your linear approximation model, that L of x function that we defined, would be the square root 3 over 2 plus the 1 half, which is our slope, times, and then it's the x value we care about minus the x value we've been sort of using to approximate nearby, which is pi thirds in this case. So we want to use this, and we want to do this at the point um, 1. So we're going to find L of 1. So this is square root 3 over 2 plus... 1 half times 1 minus pi thirds. And if we put this in our calculator, if we were to simplify this, we get that this is approximately 0 0.842. Um, we'll go with three decimal places. This is 842. And if you use your calculator with the sine function to find the sine of 1, you find that the, si um, the sine function, in fact, you know what, let's keep a couple more decimals on that just so that we can see a little bit more accuracy. I'll put a couple more here. So this is 84243. Um, but if you actually put in your calculator the sine of 1, um, you'll find your calculator gives you 0.84147. So again, they're correct with the first two decimal places. It's the third decimal place, the thousandths place, where they are off. And this one actually is off, and it won't round even to being correct. Um, but we still are correct to the hundredths place. All right, so generalizing, we can extend this idea to a set of data where no formal equation for a function is given. Uh, both cases of the last two we were looking at, we actually had a function. That is, we had sine of x or we had square root of x. Um, so we can do this for a table of values as well as what this is saying. We use the closest x value to our desired x value and the closest two points to calculate the slope nearby to our x value. Um, and this is called linear interpolation. That's what we're about to do. And as you can see on example three, you're given a table. Um, this is talking about um, finding linear interp using linear interpolation to estimate the quantity. So it says a sensor measures the position um, of a particular particle in microseconds after a collision is given, and it's in the table. We're going to estimate the position of the particle at a couple of times. One time is at t equal 8, so you notice that's between the 5 and the 10 on the table. The other time is at t equal to 12, and that's between the 10 and the 15 on the table. All right, so we can still do this linear interpolation idea, but we just aren't going to be able to use values that are quite as close as we want. So let me write the linear interpolation interp interpolation one up here when we had linear approximation. So this was f of x0 plus f prime. 
prime of x0. Remember the x0 are the values that we know something for sure about. In the cases before, they were values that were easy to calculate. In this case, they'll be values that are actually in our table. And then we can find our slope value. And we'll do that a little bit differently here because we don't have a function to take a derivative of. Um, and then we can use the difference in the x value we care about and the x value we know. All right, so here's our, our, our first value. We're going to do this at time equal to 8. So this t equal to 8 is actually my x value. This is x equal to 8. And if you look at what you see and, have, and know in the table, you have a 5 and a 10 in the table, and 8 is closer to 10 than it is to 5. So we're going to use an x0 value of 10. Um, now, 8 is between 5 and 10, so when we calculate the slope here, we're going to actually calculate the slope with these two pairs of two sets of points, this pair of points. All right, so my f of x0 value would be 10. And then to find my slope at x0, um, we're going to have to find the slope between these particular points. So I'm going to have 14 minus 8, the two y values, over 10 minus 5. And I would get 6 fifths for my slope. So my linear model would look like L of x equals the function value, which is 10, plus the slope, which was 6 fifths, times the x value we want, which will be 8 in a moment, minus the x value we know that's the closest x value we have in the table, which in this case was 10. So if we put in our value for 8 here, we get 10 plus 6 fifths times 8 minus 10, and this becomes 11.6. So one of the things you can check to make sure is that that value is maybe between the two y values that we have, right? Because the x value we're looking at is 8, so 8 is between 5 and 10, so it should have sort of be somewhere in here, right? And so the 11.6 being between 8 and 14 at least is a reasonable approximation. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing now with the t value of t equal to 10. Uh, I'm sorry, t equal to uh, 12 right here. And do the same thing. So I'm going to use a different color. Um, and we may run out of space and we have to use an x screen. We'll see. So a few things here then. Then the x value that we care about, of course, is 12. The nearest x value is still 10 in this case. It's on the other side of 10, but it's still 10. So our first function value would be the same as the function value last time because it's the x value at 10. Um, I'm sorry, I have an error on here, don't I? And I, I fixed it on the notes I have, but it's over here. That one was supposed to be 14. It's supposed to be the function value there. So this is actually 14. And this piece is 14 here. And that's actually the value that's being used to find the 11.6. I'm sorry. OK, um, so this, this function value is also f of x here. In fact, we could write this like this to be more clear. I could use the number 10 in here. f of 10 um, is the number uh, 14. All right, we need to find the slope then, also the f prime value at um, our x value of 10. And so we find that slope using the values between 10 and 15 and 14 and 18 um, because our value of x equals 12 or t equals to 12 is between the 10 and the 15. So these are the two that are the most nearby values to the value we're considering. Um, so we would end up getting 18 minus 14 over 15 minus 10 which gives us a slope of 4 fifths instead of the 6 fifths like we had in the previous part of the problem. Um, so my linear model, L of x, would be that 14, that function value, plus 4 fifths, <coughs> which is the slope value, times x minus the x value we were using, which is 10. And then if we're finding this for L of four, or 12, which is our t value, we would have 14 plus 4 fifths. That's a 5 down there. It's hard to tell, but it is a 5. And then this is 12 minus 10. Um, and we would end up with a value that is 15.6. Again, if we look back in the table, down here between the 14 and the 18, that is between 14 and 18, so it's a realistic value for our um, interpolation.